Hello, Detective Pikachu! You know what? No. No, we're not gonna do that. One second. Okay, much better. Uh, yeah, this makes more sense. Now that we've completed the free-to-play marathon, it's time for a little reflection. And so I decided I would make a series of videos where I talk, you know, where you see my face. That's a new thing. Where we talk about some of the best, some of the worst, and all of the other games that were not part of the free-to-play marathon because I, I played them beforehand. The, the FTP marathon was specifically games that I played with the intent of doing the marathon. In number five, worst, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. If you're the fifth worst, is that actually a good thing? In our number five spot is Roblox. Okay, actually, I spent more time with Roblox than most of the games in the free-to-play marathon. The only thing is, none of the games in the collection of Roblox are, what I want to say, good? None of them are really good. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. There's a lot of them that are very samey. Uh, there's one where you dig through sand to find treasures. And there's one where you dig snow. And then there's another one where you dig grass and stone. And then there's another one where you sift through sand to find sand dollars. Basically all the same game. Then there are other ones that kind of go outside that realm. Multiplayer shooty kind of games and some other action games. The problem is, is that the interface is just terrible. Menus will just pop up and then you don't know how to even interface or use that menu and they don't do you any favors. It's kind of like a hit or miss, but you get so many misses that the hits don't really matter. The other thing that I kind of felt was a little bit predatory in its marketing was that they interlace the in-game currency items with the premium currency Robux items. And if you consider that, like, a lot of small kids are probably going to be playing this game, they don't really understand that concept. Oh, here, Mommy, I want this item. Okay, just go ahead and purchase it. There's probably a credit card already on there. Okay, great. And even though I ended up spending a lot of time in Mining Simulator, which is the one where you dig through sand to <laughs> find treasures, I have to say that in retrospective, it's basically Pocket Mine, and Pocket Mine is a mobile game you can play on any platform, and it's actually a lot more enjoyable, and it's quicker. Could just play that. Number four, Hawken. Yes, the overheating issue definitely played a role in this. I did not like that, and I did not enjoy the multiplayer experience, and it, since it's an entirely multiplayer game, that's a bit of an issue. There are only two mechs that you can choose from at the beginning. I imagine there are other mech models. I saw other players with other mech models. I don't know how you acquire them. I don't really understand the mechanics behind that. The game did nothing to explain that to me, so I'm going to assume it just happens with progression if you want to keep playing a multiplayer experience that is not really that enjoyable out of the gate and will probably, as it did with me, cause a small mental breakdown while you are playing. Usually this would just be an innocuous thing. You know, you'd play a game, it doesn't work, and you just move on. But then, something happened. I happened to get on sale Titanfall 2, the ultimate edition, for so little money. I found a mech game that is terrific, kind of negating the entire purpose of Hawken even existing. Because with Titanfall 2, the game plays well, it's fluid, the servers are solid, the gameplay is really good. There's a whole single-player campaign. Uh, the multiplayer, even if you're not great at it, is a lot of fun. You know, going around and trying to shoot people, and they're probably better than you, but they shoot you anyway, and you come back, and it's quick, and it's fun, and it, it's just so engaging. So if there's an option like that out there on the market, and you can get it for pretty cheap money, why would you bother with this free game? Because I started to realize, in order for Hawken to be even close to the amount of fun that I had with Titanfall 2, I'm gonna have to pay a lot more money than I paid for Titanfall 2. Why would I even bother? Why should you even bother? Hence the reason why it does make the number four slot on the worst of list. Number three, Corgan. In the continuing tradition from the Hawken of there's a better game out that's really cheap to buy, 
we have Corgan, essentially the free version of a Diablo, except Diablo is way better. I'm not even talking about Diablo 3. I'm talking about Diablo 2. Diablo 2 is better, and you can probably buy Diablo 2 with Nuka-Cola caps at this point. I, I cannot imagine that it's very expensive, and you're going to have a better, richer gaming experience. But Corgan does so many things besides not being a very good hack-and-slash game, like the, just the level progression. In the game, they will give you a series of objectives for the dungeon that you are in. You eventually complete those. Then they give you more objectives. You have to run around your dungeon map again, find those objectives, complete those. Oh, here's some more objectives. It's like a never-ending grocery list. You know how you're like at the grocery store and you have an idea, okay, here's my list of things to do, and then somebody calls you up and goes, oh, and don't forget, we need paper towels, and I need a, a DVD of the complete works of uh, Leo Tolstoy, and if we could just get like three more vats of, you know, that bath salt, because my feet are killing. It's that kind of a game. It's that kind of a game. Why would you do that? The other thing that doesn't really make sense with Corgan is that you are simultaneously playing three different characters. You don't choose between these. All three characters, you play at the same time, and you switch between them. Now, this could have been really interesting and really dynamic, but there's no advantage to it. If one of your characters dies, you respawn back at the beginning, but you all respawn together. You don't get to combine any of their powers in a meaningful way. There's really no point in having all three of them at the same time. Man, it's almost like, can you imagine if they made a game, right, where you could just choose between a, a spellcaster, a warrior, and a rogue, and, and you could just play in a different play style, depending on which character you picked, and go on a magical, like, dark fantasy adventure? Wow. They should make that game. In at number two, and usually this would be something to be lauded, but not in this case, because, oh, this gets bad. APB Reloaded. Now, uh, APB actually has a really interesting development process, if I can go into it for a little bit. So it was originally made in 2010 by Real Time Worlds. They are also the ones that created Crackdown. You got that going for you. It was released as a full release title, but then just a couple months later, they announced that the servers were going to get shut down. It was acquired by K to network. They relaunched it the next year under Reloaded Productions, and then eventually it got a console release on Xbox in 2016 and on PlayStation in 2017. And the real question I have is, why? Sometimes when a game gets shelved, it should just stay on the shelf. And APB Reloaded, for me especially, is just one of those cases. The game is fundamentally broken. And I'm not just talking about the technical aspects, because there are technical problems by the dozen. Servers just randomly shut off. I got into a car, and I thought to myself, okay, maybe there's a loading screen, because it just cut out. And then it turns out, oh no, the game's gone. <laughs> the game has shut off, and they want me to get on a different server. Okay, glitches and, and technical things, you know, what I can do, what I can't do. There's a lot of things that are just weird. I can't shoot through glass. Usually that's a thing you can do in games that are about crime, especially after GTA. You would think that that's sort of a thing you can do. No. No, the big problem that APB has is that the gameplay itself, the gameplay they actually wanted you to experience, isn't very good and doesn't feel fully developed. You get dropped into this world, and immediately they're saying on the radio somewhere, on the a APB bulletin thingy, uh, hey, there's something happening in your area, and there's a timer, and there's a, a distance you have to travel to get there, and we have assigned you with two other people that happen to be in your area right now so that you can do this quest. And then I went there to figure out what it was, and it was a defend mission, and what am I defending? Graffiti on a wall. Yeah, that was the major thing I had to jump right to and accomplish. As soon as you're done with that, they say, oh, here's the next thing, and you have to run around to the next thing 
so that you can complete that. You know, you create this big open world setting, and you would normally think that if you're going to create that big open world setting, you would do something like utilize it, but if you're not on those missions, you just go and you start wandering around, there's nothing else to do in the game. There's just nothing. It, it's just a boring, tedious thing. And this is like the actual game. So, sorry, reloaded production or real-time worlds or whoever wants to take credit for this game, but no. It took like a hundred million dollars to make this thing. How? Uh. And finally, a late entry, but one that will never be forgotten. The worst, number one worst game of the free-to-play marathon. Catastick. I would say that Catastick was a glorified mobile game, but I feel like that's an insult to mobile games. It's almost as if somebody said to themselves, hey, you know what? We could make Mario, but you know what? Those jumping physics, they need to be way floatier. And, uh, and we need to have somebody come in who can make graphics in MS Paint. And you know what? What if Mario was just inexplicably in a Tanuki suit the entire time? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be just terrific? Wouldn't people just love that? Oh, hey, you know what would be even better? Even though we're putting it on consoles and people are going to be using controllers, we're not going to optimize it for controllers, so you can't use your analog stick. No, use the D-pad. Of course, just use the D-pad. People love the D-pad. That's what it's there for. Oh, when you actually get to the end level screen, what we're gonna do is, I know that there's only three buttons you can press here, but we're not gonna just have you switch between those buttons. No, we're gonna have you scroll as slow as we possibly can down the screen so that you can choose the button using your controller and your analog stick, which you can't use in the main game, but you can use on the end credit screens. You use that as a mouse now. Yeah, while we show you an ad, because somebody actually wanted to put ads in this thing. Yeah, it's great. And then when you realize you don't like this game and you try to back out of the game, the game doesn't even want you to do that. No, you're just going to have to quit out of it altogether. Oh, terrific. Good for you, Catastick. You know, I love myself a 2D platformer. They're really great. And you could have done so many wonderful things with that formula. This is not that at all. <laughs> it's just terrible. And I will never be able to wash the thoughts of playing it out of my head. So congratulations. You've done that to me. And so there you have it, the five worst games of the free-to-play marathon. Stay tuned because we are going to have another video on the best five, the most tolerable five, the pretty good games of the free-to-play marathon, and then one where we uh, talk about a bunch of other free games that I have played, and uh, we'll give you some thoughts on those too, in the interest of completionism. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Good gaming. Could just play that anywhere instead of worrying about an entire... Hey! Get off of there! Go away! I see you! Go! Go! Now! Excuse me! What are you doing? Sorry, I had to go yell at a squirrel. That's the thing you do in New Hampshire. You just randomly yell at squirrels you see out your window.